Big one on the road. Uh, just your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it was good. It's hard. It's hard in this league, home or away. So anytime you can go on the road against a team as good as good as Marquette and find a way to get it done, uh, it's great for the guys. And obviously, hopefully, it, uh, we can keep the momentum going. We played good basketball the last few weeks. Well, how do you feel about this matchup with Butler? Awful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just a hard matchup. They're, they're extremely well coached. They. Uh, they do what they do, and they don't, they don't they don't get out of their lane very often. They're very disciplined on the defensive end, uh, both in transition and on the quarter court. And then offensively, it's it's hard to get them to take a bad shot. Like they are going to grind it till they get the shot that they want. And, uh, obviously, they had a couple stretches in our game in Indianapolis in early January where they got away from us, and, and we have to do our best to make sure that doesn't happen again. He doesn't get the acclaim that Marcus Howard and Miles Powell get, but is. Kamar Ball been trickier to guard in some ways than those two are? You know, he's, he, he doesn't shoot the three-point shot as well as those other two, um, but he has a he certainly has a flair for making big ones. Uh, but his ability to get to his kill spots off the dribble, uh, to that mid-range and to that right hand going to the basket, his ability to finish once he gets there uh, is elite. And, I, you know, I don't know that anybody's hit more game-winning shots than this guy the last four years. He's, uh, he's electric with the ball in his hands. Uh, a very difficult challenge for us, and uh, you know, we'll have to try to be ready. You have a guy who's a lefty that's so good going to his right hand. Like it feels yeah. like it's. Yeah, you have it. I mean, you have some right-handers that like prefer to go left some, and then you know he's he can go left. He's just he's just dynamite going to his right. So uh, you know we'll prepare for that the next couple of days, and hope, hopefully we can make him take challenge shots. Great, you guys. You talk all year about your guys being unselfish on the court. It's, have they elevated sort of their understanding of the offense over the last few weeks? Do you think, I mean, your numbers are up just in general, scoring percentage, points per possession type thing. Is that them taking another jump, you think, or, or what's... Yeah, the, the ball's moving. You know, we've added a few wrinkles from the start of conference play that's, you know, pulling Christian to the top of the key and having some action on both sides when he's got it there. Uh, he's gotten better at making the decisions, when to hit the guy in the back cut, when to go to an, into a dribble handoff, when to pitch it, go into a ball screen. So I think that just comes with repetition. And then Denzel's gotten a little more comfortable uh, when we go to that small ball, understanding what we need him to do when he's out there uh, in that role, or DJ, if DJ's guarded by their center. So, uh, you know, I think it's developed over time, and guys are just a little bit more comfortable in what we're doing. Greg, you got an honor today. You're one of, t one of 15 coaches to be nominated for the watch list for the Naismith Award for Coach of the Year. What's that? What's that mean to you? I, I mean, it's a, it's nice. I mean, but it's, you know, it's, it's a sign that our team is playing really well. Uh, you look at that list, and there's nobody on that list that has a bad basketball team. They all have good basketball teams. So, uh, you know, the players have really come together. They've done a great job. Obviously, my coaching staff's done a great job throughout the year. And our focus right now is just try to. We got two important weeks left in the regular season. Just trying to finish it off. I'd like to ask you a question about your coaching career. What what got you into coaching after after college? Uh, you know, when I played for you know I played for Jim Barry and Eldon Miller at, at uh, Northern Iowa in, in different ways. Uh, they got me interested in coaching, and you know, Coach Barry was a great X and O guy. Uh, Coach Miller was a stickler for the fundamentals of the game and the importance of fundamentals in the game of basketball. And I think it kind of helped shape who I am and, and how I think about the game, but. Uh, you know, by the time I was done with college, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And uh, like my dad says, I haven't worked a day in my life, so it's been pretty good. <laughs> you've had chances to leave Creighton, and you've opted to stay here. Why have you stayed? The people. You know, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of good athletic directors in the country, but there's not another Bruce Rasmussen. Uh, you know, Mark Burgers and Adrian Dahl and everybody we work with on, in, in the other building there is terrific so uh, you know if you're happy where you're at I don't think you uh, I don't think you should be looking for other things and uh, I'm really happy where I am. What's the biggest change you've noticed in your team from that first meeting with Butler up till now? Well you know we were still trying to get Denzel acclimated into what we were doing at that time and you know that was a it ended up kind of lopsided at the end but that was a four point game with about five minutes left and Baldwin hits a three with a hand in his face right as the shot clock goes off. So, you know, we were we were right there, and I didn't think we played very well. Um, and but part of the reason we didn't play well was Butler. Uh, 
So I'd like to think we've grown since then. They've gone through some injury issues uh, where, they, where they've lost Aaron Thompson for four games, so he's been in and out of the lineup. Um, he's back now, so they're back to full strength. So, um, you know, we've, we've grown, but, you, you know, Butler's a better team as well. Greg, you've, you've got a team that some would say is overachieving, and uh, they were picked at the bottom of the conference at the start. Is this maybe one of your best coaching jobs this season? Or how, what do you think? You know, I think we're getting closer to reaching our potential. I don't think we've reached it. Uh, Mitch Ballack's trying to mess with me in the background, so I had to get him out of there. But, uh, uh, you know, they're, they've they gotten better. Your hope as a coach is you, you improve as the season goes on. And we went through a rough stretch last year where we lost three or four in a row, uh, games that we were close or had the lead in the end, and you just have to stick with the process. And we did that, and we ended up finishing strong and at least getting ourselves in the NCAA tournament conversation a year ago. Um, and you would hope that you just continue to improve. And uh, this group has gotten better as the season's gone on, and hopefully the best is yet to come. A year ago at this time, I think with this group, it was arguably rock bottom for them, considering the street stretch they were on and the way they had got to that point with the leads they'd blown. But you, you stayed patient with them, and, and I think your mantra was consistent in terms of not wanting to you know, really beat them into the ground about the, the games they had blown. Why did you, did you see this type of basketball coming? Is that why you stayed patient through that stretch? Well, obviously there were a lot of freshmen and sophomores on that team last year. Uh, so I think when you have young players in particular, you have to be patient and you have to understand that it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. It's gonna take some time. And uh, you have to play good basketball to be in those games. And then you have to play good basketball to finish those games. And, and we were playing good enough to be in it and be right there in the end. And we just weren't able to finish. And uh, you know, we've, we've made a step from a maturity standpoint this year, and it doesn't have to just be one guy. Uh, you know, there, we've got a lot of guys that are contributing at a high level, and, and they understand each other pretty well. Uh, so, you know, we've grown, and I've grown. I think when I was a younger coach, you could walk into practice the next day and know whether we won or lost the game. I don't think that is true today. Uh, and I try to get our guys to have a consistent approach to what they do, and if I ask them to do that, then I have to do the same. One last question. Uh, Kelvin, we talked to him. What's he? This is his one year here. What's he meant to this team? Well, you know, I told him the other night because he, he, I, I can't remember the DePaul game. He was a little frustrated. As he, you know, he dropped a couple balls that he had a chance to score. And I'm like, you know, do you understand that we're ranked 15th in the country and we're going to go to the NCAA tournament? And none of this would happen if it weren't for you. So, like, what he's brought to our team, the physical nature that he brings defensively, uh, he's the best screener on our team. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, he's, he's, he's playing a role, maybe not quite yeah. what he had hoped for, uh, but he's embracing what we're asking him to do, and he's contributing to us being successful. So uh, I'm glad he's here, and uh, like I said, we wouldn't be where we are without him. Right. Tell me, uh, you got to be excited about this season for you, uh, being the senior in this become kind of a special season what's it like you know for my last year couldn't don't want it to go any other way you know uh 15th in the country right now and playing with a good group of guys last year this is definitely where we want to be describe your role on this team describe my what describe your role on this team um my role on this team uh i would say is to go in there and just kind of be the brute guy uh hustle guy goes in there and just plays hard uh you know, everybody has a role in this team. I'm, I'm glad I got one. Yeah, you could probably get the Mr. Hustle Award. Is that something you strive to do out there? Because you're you're working for every rebound, every loose ball. You just got that energy out there in the court. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, last year, I, uh, I want to leave it all out in the court and don't want to have any regrets as to what I could have done and just, just want to play my hardest. How did you arrive at Creighton? How did that... Tell me how, how that journey went to get here. Um, so my college journey started at UTEP. I sat out there. I sat out one year there. I did a Prop 48 is what they call it. It's a gray shirt. Um, from there, I played the next season and left from there. I had to go to junior college. From junior college, went to Idaho State, graduated there, and uh, transfer year. Got some options this summer to go some places, and Creighton stood out to me, and, and now we're here. Yeah, tell me what sold you on Creighton. Uh, what sold me on Creighton, uh, the, the sole thing probably was the family dynamics that they have here. It's just the culture and everything's awesome. Didn't see anything like it in the country, and um, yeah, made it made it my decision easy. You know, your one season here may be the most magical season this team's had in a while. What what's so special about this team? 
Um, I would just say that no matter what's happened to us this, uh, at the beginning of the season, we had some guys with injuries and um, had a lot of people doubting us because of those things. So I think this year is special, and I think that says a lot about our group. What's, go ahead. The first time you played Butler, that was only the second game in conference play. What's kind of the biggest change you've seen in this group from then till now? Um, I would say our preparation, getting ready for games, stuff like that. We're really taking it a lot more serious. Um, we know that's where we're going to win games. So Coach Max really, really helped push that for us and having good practices. Any difference down the stretch here while you guys are playing so well? Um, sorry? What's the difference on, in the last few weeks? Why is this team playing so well? Uh, things are just starting to get, come together for us. You know, we're not doing anything too different from, from since Australia, honestly. So uh, this is around time where we want to start reaching our peak, and I feel like we're really doing that. You guys are starting to get a little bit more national recognition. You can't really sneak up on anyone. Do you kind of feel that target on your back getting bigger with each game or with each win? We're not worried about any of that. We're not getting too high or too low right now. We're just kind of focused on us because uh, at the end of the day, that's what, got, that's what got us here. So just focusing on that. Everything's coming together here at the end of the season. Uh, what's special about th this team here these last few weeks? I mean, it's a special time of the year, so we're just trying to stick together and uh, finish out the season and get some wins. So this time of year comes around, we just got to be our best and do what we do so we can be dancing at the end of the year. Butler, uh, this is another top 25 team coming in. Uh, what are your thoughts about them? I think they're a really well coached team. They play hard together and they play smart. So we just got to stick to our game plan and we got to see what the outcome comes playing against them. What do you remember about the first match up there in Indianapolis? Because uh, they won the game. What yeah, I definitely know that we owe them one for sure, but uh, they took care of their business and we weren't as focused as we thought we should have been. So we got to bring that focus to our practice floor out here today and tomorrow and be, be ready on Sunday. Uh, Calvin said the biggest change he's noticed from that first game against Butler till now is kind of the way you guys have gone about preparing for games. Would you kind of agree with that? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, preparation is key when we're playing against good teams like this and also just like us being ourselves and uh, picking up our defense, I feel like our defense has gotten much better since playing them. And so by those things coming together, I think we'll give us a better shot. Did you watch the game against Seton Hall the other night? Oh, man, that was crazy. Uh, uh, Mamu, he had a big shot, so uh, tip of the hat to him. But um, we just got to be focused and know that anybody can win in this league. So we got to be ready to play. Hey, uh, Kelvin kind of plays behind you. And what, what does he bring to this team? He's here for one season as a yeah. senior. What's he mean? Well, he's a veteran. He's been playing for a couple years now, so he knows how, how basketball goes and things like that. Also, he's a big he's a big guy, so I'm not that big. And so whenever he comes in, he brings a different aspect to our team, more physical speed. Yep. He hustles quite a bit when he's out he there. Goes hard yeah, every what's single he, play. What's he like out there in the court? He's a big energy guy for us, so when he goes out here, he wants to grab some rebounds, set go ball screen, try to get a dunk. Um, take care of their big guys, keep them off the board. So he brings a lot to the table for us. You know, the Marquette game was pretty physical. How nice is it to have these couple days off in between? Yeah, it's definitely nice when you're playing against strong guys like that. Uh, you just let your body rest and recover and got to be ready for the next one. So when's your next three-point attempt? We don't know. Whenever it's coming. So I just been I've been practicing them every single day. So whenever the time comes, it will come. What's it feel like to make one? It feels good. It's just, just like making another shot. <laughs>